artists, creators, and designers, welcome once again to the Dream Aloud Art interviews on YouTube. But this time, y'all, this time, we are in person. That's right. We are jumping off the virtual world and we are having our premiere in-person interview. Y'all, I'm so excited. We are here at the Institute of Contemporary Arts in Richmond, Virginia. So a big shout out to the ICA at ACU. And who better to have this first in-person interview with than the one and only Jordan Deloach. Listen, y'all, I am a big fan of his work, of him and his work. And we're gonna do some deep diving today because you know, it, it doesn't just stop at art. It goes much deeper, much deeper. And we already have some of his masterpieces behind us. So Jordan, welcome. Thank you, thank welcome. you. I'm excited to be here. We're Fresh about off to the get road. it today. We are definitely about to get it today. If you if you tuned into the first interview we had, which was last year in January, y'all, it was a fire conversation. It was so good. And now in person, yo, the energy is real. Right. The electricity is flowing. And, what? Come on now. <laughs> and we have, like I said, his art. So it is is so I was telling Jordan earlier, it is so vibrant in person, y'all. You got to see it. If he has a show around your way, you need to go. You will not regret it. All right, let's do it. So Jordan, okay, so for some of our folks, they did tune in last year or they've seen your previous interview, but tell us a little something about yourself. I'm opening up the floor. I am Jordan Deloach. I was born in Detroit, Michigan. Um, I currently reside in Atlanta, Georgia though, but in between time, I really moved around. I uh, initially left the city when I was like 17 years old, went to college, TSU as a matter of fact. I always wanted to do art, but it was just something that I just never really tapped into, uh, more so because of beliefs, mm -hmm. like beliefs in myself as far as whether I could do it, right. whether I was an artist, you know, whether I matched up or can, can compare to the people that I saw already doing art. So all those judgments, right? Like all that came in and I just stayed away from it. But um, yeah, so now I am an artist. Um, I uh, professionally, I work in the field or the ecosystem of Salesforce. I'm an engineer by training and by profession. Um, but my art and creativity and creative works is, are slowly but surely becoming more and more like a part of my life. So it's almost like a balance now with how much time I spend as uh, within the Salesforce ecosystem and then how much time I spend like creating art. But that's so good. Hold on, because we're about to dive deep with that as far as what you just said about balance. And so I'm going to rewind a little bit because you said, you know, you had certain beliefs about what perhaps an artist should be and maybe some of the uh, like traditional arts as opposed to the new kinds of ways that people express themselves, okay? But is, it, is there a question that's possibly looming as far as coming into, I guess what I call, what I can call like recalibrating, mm -hmm. recalibrating. So as you mentioned, coming into more of a balance now, you know, was it ever not a part of you? No, it's been a part of you, but how can you continue taking both parts and moving forward with both of them, if you will, you know? So to leave one out the equation can sometimes feel imbalanced. It literally does. You know? So, yeah. So I'm excited because you're, you're moving into a new wave now with some of the things that you're doing. So tell us how you actually started to lean further into owning up to being an artist in this way. Yeah. Okay. Good question. So, um, I, I got to a point in my life where I really just decided to like start living and doing exactly what I wanted to do. Not in like a rebellious type of way, like oh, I'm going to do whatever I want to do. Um, but in a very strategic, practical, intentional way, started to live my life, how I wanted to live it and do the things that I really wanted to do. And one of those things, like I said, I always been to be an artist. But um, as I mentioned, because of the past beliefs, it didn't really manifest at that particular time, at least in this form. Mm -hmm. um, so it got to a point where, because I've been painting now for 
about two and a half years. Mm. And people are surprised when I when I share that with them, but <laughs> it's been about two and a half surprised. years. Surprised. I know. I was like, for real? Yeah. 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 I like just got to a point one day where I'm like, you know what? Skip this. I'm really about to do and live how I want to live. And I and literally in that moment I made that decision. Mm. And I went to Michael's. Um, no, actually I went to the dollar store. Cause I didn't even know really know much about Michaels at that time. Yeah, like where to start. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know. Like I didn't know where to get the canvases from. I didn't even really know like how canvases run. Yeah, I know. I know. went to the dollar store and got those little cheap little small canvases. Got some cheap paint, yep. and I just played and paint. And that was like symbolic and almost like a rite of passage for me because I was moving from that state of limiting belief into just do it. Like, and I literally just did it and I never stopped painting ever since then. Like literally, not necessarily every day, cause I do take breaks in between uh, certain projects, but for the most part, I never stopped. Yeah, I, that's, that is wonderful because, okay, artists, I'm, I'm going to encourage you to grab on to what we're talking about here. And I'm giving a quick, quick plug about the links in the bio. Make sure you check out the links in the bio, support Jordan on his movement because the decision, make the decision. And then of course, you know, with intention, act on that decision, wait, way out, what you gotta weigh out, but then get over it, okay? Because a lot of artists out here be weighing stuff out for 10, 15 years, y'all. And never really get And not, where's the get action? To it. Yeah. Where's the action? Because in the process of taking action, that's when you're going to learn more lessons. You're going to say, okay, wait, this is working. This isn't working. Can I change this? Do I need to pivot? So it's action is part of the process. Big time. <laughs> Let it resonate for whomever it needs to resonate for, but making that decision. So and good. You know, too, like. Decision and then take action. You know, trusting, because what you just said, like trusting the process, like mm. I knew my first paintings would be amateur, right? Like I'm an amateur. I'm just starting. And I accepted that. I didn't, I didn't feel the way because they didn't, they, they suck. You know, your first couple of paintings, you know, and tend to, they can yeah, tend to suck, like, right? Whatever. <laughs> like, uh, just, I try. <laughs> like a kindergarten painting. It is painting. what it is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, but I knew that anything that you do consistently, you will see progress to some degree. And so I, I accepted that. I embraced that. Um, and I actually had fun, how can, I just, how can I say this? I actually have fun building up to where I am now to seeing the actual change and the, the difference in my pieces. Whereas before I would, you know, like I said, have limiting beliefs where I would may, maybe beat myself up about uh, wanting to do something or not doing something. And then I got to a point where when I began painting, I'm like, yeah, this is not as good as, as you know, whatever, but. Right. I know that it will get better over time and I'm actually excited to go through that process. So how can, and I'm jotting this down, y'all, I wanna say, I wanna pat myself on the back because I'm getting better at interviews by jotting things down, okay? Cause I begin on a roll and so I'm like, ooh, notes, notes, I'm so glad I have them. But let's highlight fun and how, how exactly can one, and, and of course referring to your experience too, how, can it become fun when you're saying that you were enjoying that process? What makes it enjoyable? Man, it's, it's a couple of things, really. It's one, an internal thing where it's just something about painting, mm -hmm. just the actual act of painting and creating the different brushstrokes and lines and shapes and colors. And so just literally playing in color was fun to me. It was something about it. Is it possible, if I can give more detailed, is it possible to maybe understand that you're kind of letting go? Yes. Yeah, and that yes. there's no hesitation. So I wanna maybe focus more on that. You know, the hesitation for a lot of creatives is what makes it not fun, which they don't wanna go through any process. <laughs> they wanna just kind of come Jump to the it. perfect aha uh -huh, and then take perfect actions that follow. But I could, I could just kind of gauge from how you're talking about it that you, it's fun because you just, there's no hesitation, no, no judgment. There may have been heavy judgment at first, right? But then you're just letting go and you're flowing with it. And you're like, you know what? Okay, cool. Let me accept that I'm an amateur. 
great, got it. Title is put on, uh, move on to the next thing. All right, like we're not gonna get caught up. and it allows for freedom of expression and that whatever comes through is what comes through. And so, you know, even like these pieces behind us, um, I didn't intend to paint these, <clears throat> excuse me, like I didn't intend to paint these specific pieces. Um, they kind of painted me, mm. right? It, 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 it flowed through me and- Y'all, <laughs> here we go. <laughs> yeah, it got to a point. Oh, come on, that was good. It, it just, I don't know at what point in the process of painting it where I realized, oh, this is what it's going to look like. Mm -hmm. But it got to a point where I began to paint, you know, and it starts with like one shape, right? So maybe a triangle here. And then I literally just take it step by step. And that's a lesson that I learned too with painting because doing abstract work, I don't necessarily have a, a vision in, like at the top of my head about how it's going to look at the end, right? It's more so like I'm going into it and I'm just painting what feels good. And then I trust, and this came over time too, but I began to trust that whatever is coming through on canvas, even if it doesn't look like much in the beginning, if I just keep putting a shape here, if I keep just following what feels good and put this here, that hence it'll come out in some type of way that looks like something. Oh. Good. This is so good. And I, I have now I'm just spending a lot of time writing, y'all. I'm spending a lot of time writing notes because like that is so good. This is why y'all have got to support Jordan on his movement. Like make sure you follow him on Instagram. Make sure you keep up with what's going on because the philosophy, because this we were segueing into that, the philosophy behind this work is mind blowing. When you're talking about the fact that you didn't exactly have maybe a big picture vision of what they're supposed to look like. See, sometimes we, we do have big picture visions and that's good, that's healthy. It's healthy to have an imagination. But sometimes we get so caught up and so in love with what our initial idea was that we try to force things to kind of build into that idea. But when you are present with each step Okay, when you're present and you're aware, then other things will come to you. Other forms will, will other shapes and uh, I'm referring to your work here, shapes, colors and things will take form because it will make more sense. It'll feel more fitting if you're present with each step, y'all. And so like everything that you just said, it just equals life. <laughs> like, it, that's what it feels like. It equals the experience of life that we have where we do, we have our visions, we do foresee, you know, like, oh, if I take this action, then this is probably going to be the result, the best thing, right? And if it doesn't look like it, say you start taking those actions and that vision doesn't come immediately, then we're like, okay, yeah, what? Yeah, you start to feel like, you start to second guess yeah. or like... Instead of realizing it's part of the process, hello, you know, at, that's, Y'all, I'm gonna have to sit and meditate after this one. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna like stare at a wall and just like go into a zone because that's so good. Can you dive a little deeper as far as the philosophy that's behind your work in general, or or if there's certain pieces you know that you're linking a certain philosophy to? Specifically, you know, like what you said, like painting the process of it is synonymous with life, right? Like how things flow. Uh, there are point of, points in times where we do have an envision or in a, a vision of what something will look like in the end. And then there are times where we really, it's cloudy, right? It's nebulous, we can't really see it, uh, foggy, hazy. And the only thing we can see is maybe our hands in front of our face. Right. That's the only thing I know and that I can be sure of. And so, I think about like that Michael Jackson video where uh, I can't think of the name of it. It'll probably come up as we're talking, but maybe I can um, I can remember. <laughs> um, I think it's remember the times, but it's the video where he where he was walking and as he took each step, the the um, part of the ground that he was on lit up. Billie Jean. Billie Jean. Oh, Billie Jean. Oh, and that's that's, so cool. okay, yeah. that's kind of how it is, where it's yeah. like I don't know 
the third or fourth or the fifth step. But what I do know is the very next step. Ooh, and the next step, he's going to light up the floor. And the next step is going to show. At, so you won't, you don't get, Split. you don't get step three until you take step two. Oh my gosh. Oh my right. Goodness. And it's like the floor is being created as you're walking and the, 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 the process of the floor coming into material form as you're taking the step requires faith. Right. Because essentially in the beginning, you're, it's like you're stepping out on something that's not there quite yet. But it's the it's the faith of it manifesting and you actually taking action in that that creates that foundation to uh, to come into place. So gosh, okay. that's how I go about it. And, and even life, too, you know, like even in us. That's like. That's what I'm comparing it to right now. It's like a stepping out on faith and to actually say that in reference to each step of the process with your work is that's so big. And I really hope, and I'm sure that artists are catching these gems because you are stepping out on faith, like with every part of that process. And even though it may look weird or watery or watered down or whatever, okay, even though it may look like that, it's still part of learning. Okay, if it looks messy and raggedy to you, okay, back to the drawing board then. We're just, it's, this is part, oh. It's art. It's no, I, I, I got a quote that I pulled out of like my work, right? So what I learned with painting and particularly abstract painting is that there are no mistakes and yet mistakes can be corrected because there have been plenty of times where I thought I made a mistake, right? And then I'm like, oh, well, this is not a mistake. This actually looks kind of good. And then there were times where maybe I'm drawing a line and maybe the You know, you you legit know that if you don't pay attention to that GPS and you take a different path, you know that you'll be rerouted right back on track. No hesitation. You're just like, oh snap, up, oh, missed the exit, but guess what? I'm I'm on my way. You know, perspective. Yeah, that is. Oh. It's like it's so it's what it's multiple routes to get to the same same destination, right? I need, you gonna make me holler, okay? So <laughs> once again, we're, we're here at the ICA, and the ICA is like really formal right now. People are like enjoying like the cafe and everything, but, but I really want to holler. holler. I'm trying <laughs> to just like, <laughs> try to keep, keep together. together. <laughs> that is yeah. so good. Yeah, it's, it's, you get so many process because something I've said before on uh, Dream Aloud Art, uh, which is my IG, but something I've said to artists over the years is like, you may be frustrated with the art you're doing because that's not the medium you need to be working with. You're trying to make like, like I'll use myself as the example because I've, I've experienced this. I am more of a watercolor person. Now, I like a whole lot of, you know, forms of expression, a lot of different mediums, but watercolor ink specifically, watercolor ink feels so much better than like, say, a different form of watercolor. But I, I had to go on my own path in order to find that out. You know, if I'm, if I'm using acrylic and it's like, why does this feel chalky blocky and I am not interested? Because I probably need to do something else. Yeah, so I love that. So let's go back to your work here. Now we're talking about, we're touching on, you know, your philosophy, different lessons of life. When you're looking at, we'll just use this one here. First of all, tell us the title to this one, if you have a title for it. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So this one is called Refraction. Refraction. So if we're looking at.
said, okay? That's what he said. If this piece was painting you, what what exactly did you get from that experience? Wow, that's a good question. So you gotta ask good questions, y'all. I'm you trying know, to it, pat myself on the back. <laughs> I'm just saying. It but kinda, yeah. I kind of went through that process that I mentioned before where I didn't try to paint that initially, sure. right? You know, um, and as a matter of fact, I had, I wouldn't say another vision in mind in terms of an end goal, mm-hmm. but I had something that I, another path that I thought I was going down. I got re, re, uh, redirected, right? right? And so as I began to formulate and uh, create this piece, it, it turned into a process of going through levels. Where, and that's what essentially came out of that because right. um, at the time I was going through a few different things personally and they warranted me to be more accepting of what is, right? Um, accepting of what's taking place and not necessarily looking to avoid it, not necessarily looking to shun it, but full acceptance. And so I realized that acceptance was one aspect of this continuous progression of evolution that we're all on. Yeah. And I think with that in mind, as I was painting this, it began to come through in the piece and where you could see it looks like a leveling up to the top of the triangle, right? Absolutely. And, yeah, that. and and that's even symbolic. Like steps. Yeah, like steps moving up. And, you know, it's symbolic in that even at the, the, the base of the uh, triangle where you could still see that it's two split colors on the left and right. Mm-hmm. But then when you move past a certain point and you get towards the apex of the triangle, it's only one color, it begins to merge. And even that's symbolic spiritually. Right. Like, <laughs> so, you know, we get into uh, the, the separation, right? The, 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 the separation of being in human form. We're all individuals. We all are uh, individual egos. We all are people. Um, and as we ascend, right, these are you know, more spiritual concepts. As we ascend, we get into a space where we realize that we are actually this. This all is. One, it's the same. You know, we, we, we look different, we, we act different, we talk different, we're from different parts of the earth, but that's, but that's the, the illusion. illusion. Oh my gosh, if y'all don't follow this man on IG, <laughs> I'm gonna scream, okay? <laughs> like, for real. That's the illusion. Oh, that's the, the illusion, illusion, y'all. So good. And, and I even will add this too. Um, the, the, the black and white, you know, entering the pyramid mm-hmm. is symbolic of kind of like black and white thinking, right? Still, still being in that illusion, uh, still seeing things, things as in duality, like duality. this or that. That's what I was That's trying the to think. Word. I was like, what is the, the word? Yeah, yeah, duality. This or that, right? Yes. Up or down, yes. north or south, yeah. uh, uh, opposite, opposites, things like that. Yeah. And mm-hmm. when you know the lines enter into the pyramid they also exit outright in a, a variety of colors. So, and, yes, and, so true. Um, and even the angle to which they go in and exit out That's is intentional. Okay. Right? I try to get it to a 60 degree angle mm. uh, because in uh, astronomy and in astrology, a sextile is a 60 degree angle between two different planets. So when they're 60 degrees away in measurement, um, that's considered a harmonious aspect in astronomy. So things flow smooth, things, uh, they gel together well. Uh, uh, they essentially, like I said, are in harmony. And that's the energy I wanted to like capture with the way in which the, the array of colors came out of the pyramid. So you go in black and white, right? The black and white understanding, but then you go, it goes into the pyramid or it goes into this transformative process where when it comes out of the pyramid is now nuanced. It now has enlightenment, it now has color, variety of colors. It now has uh, uh, the understanding that there's more than just black and white. Yeah, absolutely. That's so good. But you know what? There's a lot of, and I don't have all the verbiage down because I just don't, but I have an understanding as far as a connection between, how can I say, like mathematics and spirituality. Numbers, symbols, yeah. geometry, geometries, yeah. Um, sacred geometry, 